So, uh, happy Easter to all of the Tabletop Baseball Plus folk out there. My name is Tenacious Earl, and a um, friend of the channel, friend of my channel from back before. Um, not gonna... He knows who he is. He, he said, you know, some of your best videos as far as like ratings and stuff were tutorials he's like why don't you do any more of those and i was like well i don't know um part of it is is that i think there's there is the opportunity for criticism which is fine but um it takes some time to do a tutorial and so um i've kind of like avoided them mostly because i've tried to avoid um uh dealing with the possibility of being critiqued and feeling as though you're not maybe, you know, even sometimes some of the comments get to the point of, uh, maybe you shouldn't be making these videos and it's like, okay, well that's great. And the point that this person made is maybe you should just delete those comments and maybe I will in the future. But I thought that this is a, an opportunity to try. I had an idea come to mind based on, um, Baseball Demos recently has done some um, videos where he talked about um, a... He, he posted a video from a Nationals um, like talk show where they he had written in a, a question about Stratomatic and about scorekeeping. Um, I think scorekeeping first and then Stratomatic second. And... Um, and so I, I, I don't know how he did as far as views, but it made me think to myself, um, one opportunity for a tutorial here, which is not necessarily going to be anything of, it's all, I mean, this is basically personal preference. I, the reason that I came into liking Stratomatic was that I like scoring games and it turns out that playing Stratomatic, um, solo, especially gives you a, an unlimited number of games that you can score. Like if you were waiting, if you're in the middle of the off season for major league baseball and you wanted to score a game, good luck. I mean, I guess you could subscribe to MLB TV and go back and, and score a game from the regular season, but some might do that, but why not Stratomatic? And so um, I, I know I've done on my other channel, I have another channel, Tenacious Strat. I don't post videos there anymore unless I make a mistake like I did a couple months ago. But I think I did a, a, a video about uh, scorekeeping uh, before. But in this case, what I would like to do is do a video on these paper score sheets. Um, what I have done throughout the Phillies project from game one through game 162 and the playoffs, there was only one game that was a tribute to Roy Halladay when he passed away because of that plane accident. That was the only game I didn't just use plain old notebook paper. And so I just want to go through and do a quick tutorial on how I set up a paper, a notebook paper score sheet. If you're at home and you want to watch a ball game on TV, you can do this on a sh on one sheet. You could actually do this on two sheets. And you can score a game without really needing some big fancy schmancy scorebook. Which, you know, I've got one right here. I don't really need to give out the name of it. But I also have like a, a score master or whatever you call it. You know, I have two or three different varieties. And I'm not really endorsing one over the other. I think Baseball Demos recently had one where he put the Bob Carpenter scorebook out there. There's a lot of varieties. Um, they all are good in certain things and not so good in others. The notebook paper one, it was more for a personal, um, uh, what do I want to say? I, it, was, it was a personal preference. I wanted to show myself, or like a challenge. I wanted to show myself I could do a project using only paper. 
So we've got Boston and Cleveland that's going to come up here, and I'm going to do a tutorial here, and I'm going to set up the score sheet. I'm not going to play the game on this video. I'm going to set up the score sheet, and then I may, if I have time, give a little tutorial on what I do when I score, um, just so that way anybody who is new and, and doesn't, and has seen the way that I kind of hen scratch stuff on here, what it means, um, maybe this will give you a little insight. So here we go. We'll just do a quick score sheet uh, to get going with the Boston-Cleveland uh, game four in uh, at Jacobs Field. So be right back with that setup. Okay, so here is your plain old sheet of notebook paper and I like to have some paper underneath it. I usually like to have a stack of notebook paper because um, when you just do it on a clipboard, when you write on a plain old clipboard, it can not be so comfortable. I use, at this point, I've been using 207 regular pens. If you can see here, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. It's kind of tough uh, to get it to focus in because maybe that is a little bit here. But the Uniball Senio uh, 207s. And so what I start with is I start with a title. And so the title of this is Tenacious Earls. Okay, and let me first say, if you comment about how lame it is that somebody wrote, writes their own name on their own score sheet, then more power to you, I guess. Tenacious Earls 2008 Super Advanced Playoff. And someone might also say, why aren't you writing it in a way that is legible? And that's another tale for another day. How about that? <laughs> okay, so then the next part is going to be the... And I this, this title varies. Sometimes I forget to do certain things. Sometimes I add other things. But I like to try, if I remember, to put what what the series is, if there is a series. So this is uh, the ALDS Game 4. And I'm going to put usually just put the cities. Boston at Cleveland. And usually like to put the venue, Jacobs Field. I don't think it was Progressive Field at this point, but if it is, then I need to get a history lesson. But, okay. I like to put the date. This will be October 6th. And we're going to make this a night game since it's the only game for October 6th. And um, I haven't been doing this, but we can also do this here. Uh, actually, no, because this is another thing I do set up. So the next thing I do, so the rest of the sheet is where the score sheet goes, the scoring. And so uh, we put, I like to put the mat or the, the uh, nickname mascot name whatever but red Sox for boston we'll go on this first line and then down here i take where the the middle punch hole is and i go one line below that and then i put the abbreviations okay and then i put their records here uh, this becomes like a box score well a box score so Boston at this point is up two games to one, so we don't take the full regular season record. I was putting regular season record as we got towards the end. So then I put a little hyphen here just to separate two. Box score, and then I put nine innings. Sometimes I make the, sort of the triplets of the, uh, like the thirds of the game a little more uh, distinguished, but or distinguishable, but in this case I'm just kind of writing across. Then what I do, do is I box in the box score with two straight lines. I do have a ruler that I often feel like is too much work to deal with. So, um, and then what I'll do is I will put the home team right underneath it. And then I put a horizontal line right underneath that. And then I put the horizontal line underneath the top one usually. I mean, you could do it in any order really, but. Uh, and so next off, I, I'll just put little filled in triangle and little filled in diamond that's where my um ballpark 
weather effects will go. And so at this point, we have it where we're ready to kind of like fill in the lineups. So, well, I can go ahead and uh, maybe we'll just go ahead real quick with uh, showing you how I'm going to make the lineup. So I'm going to start with the Red Sox. So you can see that the Indians are going to use Zach Jackson. They're going to go with their fourth starter and not, and not use, they're going to, hopefully if they can, well, they're hoping that if they can beat Boston with Jackson, that then they can um, bring back Lee and maybe he'll fare better than in game one. Uh, Tim Wakefield. The, the Red Sox are going to, they would like to use um, Lester in game one of the ALCS. So they're going to try and get by with Wakefield here. So, but against the lefty, we need to come up with a lineup for the Red Sox. And so I'm going to kind of go with the uh, typical, we're going to need Jacoby Ellsbury. We're going to have Euclid at first. That's a given. Uh, Ellsbury is an outfielder of some sort. Veritek is going to be catching. And Pedroia is obviously going to be the second baseman, no matter. And against the lefty, definitely. And um, now against the lefty, they may want to go with someone other than J.D. Drew out there. But they will probably use Jason Bay and left. You're going to have Big Poppy as D.H., right? Uh, you could give him the night off, but why deal with that? Um... And with the lefty, you're not going to use Cora. Although, you may need to use Cora because you are... What you could do is put Lowry at third and Cora at second, or at short. Um, he is the only other shortstop that they have available here. So, um, they will go with Cora. And Lowry will play third base. They could go with Kevin Cash there. Not a great fielder. Um, actually, what we'll do to try and load up with... Um, yeah, let's... We will stick with Cora at second. And they will use they will use Drew in right field. So um, a little thin here, but so okay. Now that's going to be our basic lineup, uh, or our basic uh, out in the field. And Boston has pretty much been using Ellsbury, Pedroia, Bay, and Ortiz as their top four, and they'll stick with that, and then Euclid in the fifth spot, and then it's just a matter of how you want to do I think they're going to put Drew down in the lineup. They will go with Veritek next, since he's a righty. They'll go with, uh, they'll, they'll use Lowry last, so that means that they'll go um, Cora, Drew, and Lowry. They'd like to, we kind of, I'd kind of like to put somebody in front of Drew, who maybe is a bit more of a, of a, he gets hit a couple times here, and not going to draw walks. Cora isn't, but so, okay, so we've got, well, let's do the other lineup, too. Might just as well do this first, so let's get this out of the way. So against Wakefield, that means you're going to want lefties in the lineup where possible. So Hafner is going to be the DH, most likely, and so then it's just a matter of, the, and they, what they could do is use a very similar lineup to their previous game, which is DeLucci in left, Chu in right, Sizemore in center, and then it's a matter of Garco, Vic, Victor Martinez, which, who you want to use at first, Marte, uh, they, they'll probably go with Cabrera at second, Peralta short, and then it's a matter in Shopik at catcher. They could go with Martinez as the catcher. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna give Ryan Garko a run out here today. So um, they're gonna give Martinez uh potential pinch hitter duties, so it'll be Sizemore going to lead off. That's, 
Um, then Chu will go second. And then they had been using Victor Martinez in the three hole with then Peralta next. I think I think they will use I think they'll use Chu in the three hole. And they will put Cabrera. They'll put Cabrera second. Chu Peralta. So you could also, if, if they try to go lefty out of the pen, then you could have sort of an uh, alternate, alternating uh, group there. Then they'll put Hafner, who's more of a strikeout machine at this point in his career than a home run machine, but he does have some pop. And then from there, you can go, uh, we'll go Shopik. Actually, we'll go Garko before Shopik here. And Marte and Delucci, kind of like having Delucci there in the bottom spot of the order. So that only took us about five minutes. So let's. This is what I do. Um, I just start filling in from the top. So we've got Ellsbury, and I always use the abbreviation, not the number. So he'll be in center field. So then I put the. Rating so he is a two plus one e zero in center and a 17 running rating. That's how I do my um, ratings. So here I can I can put this up here. This is going to be range and then arm and then glove and then speed. Okay, that's for most players are going to be that. So Pedroia, and then we just remove the arm if it's not an outfielder. For the catcher, um, I put on top, I put the throwing arm, or the throwing air rating, so that's a 6. You can see T1 to 6 right here, so that means that um, if you roll a 1 through 3 on a stolen base attempt, uh, you then have to re-roll the D20, and if it ends up being between this rating, so ahead of this, so 1 to 6, it's a throwing air. I make a fraction, I put underneath it the past ball rating which is right next to it on the card so you can see it right there it's a one so that comes up if you roll a two on that d20 when there's guys on base and then you roll a d6 and if it's four to six when you roll that d6 then you uh, roll the d20 again and if it's underneath the number if it's at or underneath the number that is in parentheses which i put here so that's what that per, that's what that little fraction I put there is. Okay, and so that's Boston's batting order. Then I put a little dotted line underneath this for the AL. For the NL, we've already got the pitcher sitting there. And on the AL, you don't have quite as many substitutions. But then what I do is underneath this, I put pitchers. And then I will put Wakefield. What I'll also do is next to it, I will it will allow me to put down the innings pitched for each pitcher. So um, as we go through the pitchers, we will just list them. So that's the Red Sox, and now we'll do the Indians.
Okay, and again, we're going to put a dotted line here, and we're going to put pictures underneath it. This is going to be Zach Jackson. Okay, and then a lot of times what I do now a days is I will just go ahead and put the innings up here. Now, if I'm playing offline, I will usually put only one through six and give a little more space and instead use at bats rather than innings. But I feel like most people are more familiar with innings on the column scorekeeping. So right there we go with a score sheet from scratch. Again, you can put in your uh, you can put in your your uh, ballpark singles, ballpark homers. And you've got a, a box score. You keep track of stuff. You've got room over here. If you need to go past 10, you've got room over here. Yeah, you know, all, all along here. You have room here to, you can write down. I put injuries in these little spots to the right. So let's, I'm just going to get another piece of paper out and I'm going to go through my scorekeeping technique real quick since we should have a few minutes here to do that. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So as I was saying before, what you can do, if you want to score on a piece of notebook paper, like a regular game, what you could do is you could actually use both sides for a game and then kind of do it the way I've done it here. Um, and I'm upsizing this some. I'm, I'm making my columns wider because I, uh, you know, I want to be able to allow you to see more of what I'm doing. So if you want to imagine, let's imagine that this is sort of the bottom of each row here like that okay so um, so let's just say Ellsbury starts off so this is gonna be a single so I put I, I make a diamond when I'm scoring online when I'm recording and so I put a dot wherever the hit goes so let's say Ellsbury it's a single let's say Pedroia gets a double that's going to be on the the first to second base path and then what I would do is let's say the Ellsbury scores on that double Boston Red Sox fans now are very happy so Pedroia is the second guy in the lineup so because of Pedroia's double Ellsbury goes around during the second batter's course of action and so then I put an, I put a plus sign in the middle to de designate a run. So one nothing. Let's say Bay now walks. We will again do a walk like that. Okay. All right. Now let's say that Ortiz say strikes out swinging. So striking out swinging is going to be a K. And this is for strat. This is for regular. You can see my column isn't particularly straight at the moment is because I'm kind of cockeyed a bit so apologies there but um, now let's say that Euclid just say grounds in a double play and it's gonna be a ground ball is always just the positions that handle the ball and I always put it in the at bat in in the box of the batter for six three unless it's something special so if it's a double play that's all i do and i you put a little arrow and now i can put a line underneath and that designates the end of the inning so one run scored now if i were doing a an actual game i probably would put the pitchers farther down and i might just do like um hits uh runs hits uh Errors LOB, and so you could do a one run, two hits, uh, no errors, and one left on base because the runner at second moving to third was not thrown out. And I might do that for it. I'm not going to do that anymore, but that might be one way that then you could kind of keep track of not only your runs, but how many hits are in the game. It's a nice way to kind of like just quickly do that. So let's go to the second inning. And let's say Veritek, he'll, um, uh, let's say he singles. So we're going to do another single. 
um, Veritex not the best option for what I wanted to do. So let's uh, let's actually scrub that, and let's say that he flies out. So a fly out for me is always just going to be the number. So let's say it's a fly out to uh, right field. That'll be nine. Okay. So then let's say uh, Alex Cora. So let's say he's, he singles here. Actually, let's say he's hit by pitch, HP. That's how I do a hit by pitch. We already did walk up here. Hit by pitch, and let's say he's going to steal a base. So I, I then, I don't, I don't really, I, and I probably should, but I don't put the bat where the stolen base occurs. I just put a stolen base, okay? Now, remember earlier I mentioned about throwing errors. Let's just cover that right now. If there is a throwing error on this play, then I would put a throwing error, and it's always going to be the catcher that throws, unless it's a pitcher. You could have a pitcher who tries to cut the runner off, uh, maybe uh, pick off, attempt at first, and the guy breaks right on move, and then let's say the, throw, let's say the first baseman throws it away. You could have that too, but usually it's going to be throwing error. I put a TE2. To designate an error. Okay, so then Drew, let's say he let's say he homers. One out home run. So the dot's gonna go from between third and home. He is the eighth batter, so we'll put him here. So three nothing. And and now let's say Lowry triples. So there you go, there's your triples. So now let's say Let's say let's say Ellsbury reaches on an error by the shortstop. Shortstop throws it away, trying to come home with it to get Lowry. So that's an E6. We will put it right here. Um, he scores on the one. Let's let's change this. That's what I would do if it's an E6. But let's say th he throws home and it allows. Ellsbury, because he's a speedster, to take second on a two base error. So then we'll put the E6 up here. And I might even put a little arrow just like this to show that he reached on a two base error. Okay. Um, you could also put here a fielder's choice and then an error. Uh, that might be the more appropriate way to do it. Either way, you're going to end up assigning an at bat to Ellsbury without a hit um fielder's choice is an is an 0 for 1 an error is an 0 for 1 so it doesn't really make a difference but let's say now Ellsbury is at second with one out let's say he caught stealing we'll put a cs okay that'll be two five right so that's the second out trying to steal with one out that's pretty commonplace things steal third and now pedroia up and let's say that he uh, fouls out to the catcher. I use a small f to designate a foul out, and that will end the inning. So, for nothing, bad day here for the team that the Red Sox are playing, but depending on how many runs the other team has scored. Well, let's see, what other situations haven't we uh, run into yet? Well, let's, um, well, let's, let's say Bay doubles. Okay, let's say, um, let's say uh, Ortiz ground out to second base, it's a 4-3, okay, and, and Bay is able to move to third on that. So then again, we put designation for the runner, the batter that the runner moved there on. So now let's say Euclid lifts a fly ball into deep center field, we put a sack fly for eight that's the second out but the run scores so that will be batter six so he would get the rbi now you could you could do some other things here i will admit in this case you could you could find a way to mark an rbi you could put sometimes people put dots sometimes people would you know might write down the number of rbis you could do that um and now let's just say veritech let's say he strikes out looking so there is your scorekeeping backwards K for a looking strikeout. 
So now it's five to nothing or five whatever. I don't know. We don't know what the other team has done. So let's um, let's say Cora he flies out to left. That's a seven. Let's say Drew singles, and now Lowry not having a well. He had a triple, but let's say the manager wants another run. It's five four. Wants another run here. He's going to sacrifice Bunt, and the sacrifice is successful. Lowry will say that it, he sacrifices it to the um, the first baseman. So we'll go 3-4 because a lot of times the second baseman will have to cover first if the bunt is down the first baseline. That moves Drew to second and you put a 9 there. So now with two outs, just to make the manager look like a genius, Ellsbury singles, Drew gets on his horse, he beats the throw in, and another run for... The Red Sox, and now we will say, hmm, let's see, what, what other types of, uh, well, we could do a pop-out. Let's say a pop-out to the shortstop, P6, to end the inning. So, there's also other things that could happen here. Let's say Bay singles, tries to get a lead. I, I look, put a little arrow here, pick off. Ortiz, he could line out to second baseman, L4. Um, and so that's two outs, and we could go 5-3, third baseman, ground out. Ends the inning, so that's a relatively uh, good inning for the other team. Let's put a six here, just because I want to do one more thing potentially here we could get uh Veritex singling and then I like to put a DPL four here and I'm gonna put a little arrow because he comes off here four three I do put that um let's say Drew then he's gonna be three for three he's gonna triple actually no let's say double double for Drew, he's three for three. He's a triple away from the cycle. Uh, Lowry singles with two outs. Drew gets to third on the nine and then comes home. And uh, he is thrown out a single into center field. It'll be eight to two, a good throw by whoever is the center fielder. That will end the inning, and that's how I do it. I don't mark down my outs. You could do that. Again, this is... This is a way you can do this on a sheet. And what I would do is if I was really um, keeping track of a nine-inning baseball game, I would just condense these a lot. You can make the diamonds narrower. Um, but see, you could do this on a sheet of paper. And, you know, the scorebooks aren't that expensive. I mean, Bob Carpenter is probably 30 bucks or something like that. But, you know, the one that I showed you earlier... I think that was probably five or ten bucks. Um, you can get uh, the score masters are probably in the ten to twenty range, and you know there's some other one that I think looks really cool is Ephus League. They've got a couple of them that are um, custom design, and some of them have little pockets or whatever. I mean, it's um, just whatever your fancy. You know, it's it's a I don't want to say it's a dying art, but it's an art that is underappreciated. And I think learning what all of this is about also helps you to then um, analyze the game and learn more about how things work in baseball. Um, you know, this error, um, in this case, uh, it, it's, uh, let's see. Well, this error here would make this error, the third out, if, and so Lowry's run would be unearned. This would also be unearned. No, this would not be unearned because he would still, so in this case, again, this is, here, here comes a little bit of um, bonus coverage. Um, your scorekeeping, your, your, and maybe we should just do another video with um, statistics because some people may not understand statistics, but let's take, let's take earned runs. In this inning here, we've got two errors, correct? We could actually do this. We got three runs on uh, two hits. You got one, uh, two errors, and you've got nobody left. Everybody, this guy was thrown out, and everybody else scored. All right. 
So you might think, okay, if an error is involved in any run scored, that it's going to be an unearned run. And that is not the case. So take this one here, for example. you got a throwing error here, okay? Should that hurt the play? This does not represent an out. This represents that he would have stayed at second because the stolen base was a sure thing, okay? You get a home run from Drew. Cora would have scored on a home run whether he was at second or third. So this is still an earned run to the pitcher. So now Lowry... Um, so now let's say... So this is not an out still, right? Um, third... So Lowry's at third. This is an error on the shortstop. Now, I guess this is where you might say... Um, if a so if if he is awarded an error on this, that means that an average throw would have been able to get this runner out, and so this should be an unearned run. If if the if a if a competent fielder should have been able to get the out, then he would be assigned an error for not making that throw properly. If that makes sense. So in this case, Lowry would be an unearned run because he should have been thrown out at home. Correct? That's that's my that's the way I would score it. And, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's correct. You can leave a comment if you think that's incorrect. Maybe it is incorrect. But that is my understanding is because that error occurred and and that should have thrown him out. So all these other runs are earned, but it, it is a little bit of a dicey game when you get uh, errors, what you need to do is reconstruct the inning and say to yourself, what happened? What would happen if no error occurred? In this case, no error occurs. The runner at second scores on the home run. In this case, if there's not an error, he gets thrown out at home, right? The normal effort. So if this, if Lowry beat him with the throw, then that should be a fielder's choice Run scores, no error. Ellsbury doesn't go to second, all that stuff. But because this is an E6, we have to assume that it was a bad throw. Lowry would not have scored with a bad throw. With a good throw, with a, with a average throw even, he would have been out. So, unearned run. That would be my interpretation. So, anyway, um, and again, RBIs, we could also go... There's all sorts of uh, stuff that we could do on analyzing... Uh, wins, losses, saves, all that kind of stuff. So, um, for this Easter Sunday, I hope that this is a uh, tutorial that helps some people out who um, maybe they say to themselves, I, I don't have a scorebook. What can I do? Well, this is one thing you can do that's very simple. You can take a notebook, just a plain old college rule. I, this is, and this is college rule here. You can take a college rule notebook and you've got a scorebook right there. You just need to take a little bit of time to dude it up the way that you want it. Um, be expressive. Be creative. It's okay. You can develop your own rules. Some people use uh, four or five different colored pens so that that way for a hit that they make it one color. That way it's easy to look after the game and say, oh, that guy went two for four. There's two red um, or two, two green uh, lines as opposed to red for out if that's what they want to do. I mean, there's there's lots of ways you can do it. Like I said, be creative. If you want to comment, you can comment with any special tips that you have, uh, things that you like to do, anything not so common that you, you like to... That, that's your your creative touch on a scorebook. Because, um, like I said, I mean, this is something that has been near and dear to my heart over the years. It still is. I have yet to score a game in the new 2018 season for Major League Baseball, but... Whenever I go to a minor league park or a major league park, I usually either like try to take a scorebook or buy the program and keep score there. It's usually tough because they put them on this like sort of a laminated page that kind of wipe everything wipes off of pencil. It doesn't write well. Pen, it wipes. If it's a hot summer day, your sweat will make it run. It just doesn't, it gets a little messy. So um, scorebooks are better, but then if it gets to raining, then your scorebook gets all ruined, and then you're, uh, in, you're, you may be out a few bucks. So, you know, it's, it's all up to you, but like when you're at home 
And if you just can't afford one or you don't want to invest in one, you aren't, or let's say you just never have scored a game before and it's something that you might want to try doing, there you go. This is an easy way to do it. Again, it doesn't have to be difficult. I haven't listed all the positions, but I can tell them to you right here, right off the top of my head. One is pitcher, two is catcher, three first base, four second base, five third base, six shortstop, seven is left, eight is center, nine is right field. If you're playing in softball, 10 is what's considered the short field. Or, um, you know, a lot of times in softball now, they use four outfielders spread across. Sometimes even five out there because teams just mash the ball and you just don't have a lot of opportunities for uh, grounders. So you, you see all sorts of creative stuff in softball. But that's for baseball what the, you know, what the number system is. 4-3 is a second baseman to first baseman ground out. A 1-4-3 could be a double play. Could also be a single put out if it glances off the pitcher, is collected by the second baseman, thrown to first for the out. You can have that sometimes. Um, so a little bit of nomenclature, some more. The put out is the person who put the out on the guy. So if you're at first base, like the throw to first on a batter running there on a ground out, the put out goes to the first baseman. Okay. The assist goes to whoever threw it over or assisted in engaging the putout. A strikeout, the putout is the catcher every time. Unless, unless it's a wild pitch, it gets away from the catcher and the batter goes down to first, catcher throws to first, then the putout goes to the first baseman and assist to the catcher. So pitcher does not get an assist on a strikeout. It's too bad for him, but he does get the strikeout in his uh statistics so that's good um obviously the fly out we talked about um a lot of different you know you, you could you could decide that you're going to put dp uh six three for a a four six three double play and put four three on the base path for the guy who's thrown out second it doesn't matter it's yours that's what i'm trying to get home this is the way i do it but it's something that can be so interesting it can it can give you things to do in the commercial breaks it can give you something to do, keep you busy in between pitches, pitching, uh, you know, manager. Now, now they can only come out to the mound six times, but still there are six times, 12 times, if you count both teams, that you have stoppages for like pitching, you know, hey, do you need to sand your nails? Uh, you're just not getting enough uh, bite on your curve or whatever it is. I don't know. I mean, who knows what they go and talk about out there. Wow. Look at the... Look at that thing there in the second row. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to encourage the jocularity or the, uh, you know, uh, behavior, but I, I just don't know. I've never been in a mound visit. I was never a pitcher. I've never been a coach. I don't know. But <laughs> with that being said, um, the score scorebook, it's about you. If you. And if you don't like scoring, that's... That's fine. I mean, the game is the game, and it's good enough whether you score it or not. But some of us eggheads may, um, and if you've never tried it, here's an opportunity to do it with a book that is something that you can buy at your local um, multi-conglomerate department store for like 99 cents probably, maybe less if you catch it on sale. So thanks for um, watching. Um, if you like the videos that we're putting out here on the channel, um, please subscribe. Uh, also, if you hit like, it just, I don't know. I have no clue what Google's algorithms are for YouTube. Maybe it, maybe it'll put us in some kind of a, you know, when you, when you scroll, when you're watching somebody's video and you're like, what's, what's in all these videos down here, anything related, maybe it'll go in, maybe if you like this, it'll go into somebody else's video that's in there, you know, Somebody who's talking about, you know, the 10 greatest um, suicide squeezes in MLB history or whatever. Maybe we'll get lucky and be in that one. So, um, anyway, uh, thanks a lot. And uh, until next time, uh, we'll probably get this uh, Red Sox-Indians game in here at some point in the next day or so. Already got it set up. It's already ready to go. I have no excuse now. But hope you enjoyed this video and take care. God bless. Happy Easter. And enjoy your tabletop sports. <laughs>